Good morning, folks. We've got a death toll in Haiti from yesterday's earthquake, Voyager, and a voyage much further, hurricane alerts, and top science news. Let's get started, however, at spaceweathernews.com and find a significant coronal hole situation is going to be followed up by another one. Still no sunspots or solar flares, but the solar wind is intensifying this morning as seen in the yellow panel where stream density more than tripled in the last few hours, and if faster streams follow in the purple panel when that density drops out, we will expect a rise in geomagnetic activity as we'll be inside a coronal hole stream. With two of those coronal hole openings back to back, we will have increased geomagnetic alerts during the impact of the second one. Of course, the earthquake warnings due to them have been coming here and through our app yesterday. And while it won't go down in any record books, the same region hit by a larger 7-pointer in 2010 saw considerable damage and at least 11 dead after yesterday's shaking. Just southwest of Haiti, a tropical system is strengthening as it heads north into the Gulf. The system is going to ram the Panhandle and jump into Georgia later this week, and as that happens, a system in the East Pacific is going to yank the wheel to the right and take a similar path to that of Rosa this past week. On the opposite side of the planet, that low in the northern Indian Ocean is intensifying and could be ready to deliver a tremendous blow to Oman. There are a considerable number of the models that have it shifting more westward towards Yemen. Let's go next into space. Back in the 70s, the twin Voyager spacecraft were launched, and after using a number of the planets as boosters, the craft have been approaching the heliopods for decades. While Voyager 1 likely entered interstellar space a bit ago, evidence suggests it just happened to Voyager 2. Since the last few weeks have seen a tremendous surge in the satellite's cosmic ray readings, and it's tough to argue about that spike when it's persistent and not momentary. Up next, we're going much, much further, all the way to Sagittarius A at the center of the galaxy where the active nucleus of our Milky Way makes lots of flare events. But two recent ones seem to be breaking all the patterns, including in wavelength representation of the flare and in the duration of the burst. Speaking of bursts, the great September 2017 solar flares obviously caused considerable ionospheric excitement, and now the AGU is putting out a study detailing critical GNSS errors over Europe and highlighting how lucky we were that the solar wind parameters were limited due to the CME missing Earth. A stealthily phenomenal study details how a 10-20 to 20 minute wait time is all we have until the neutral layer is affected by even the basic space weather events. By the way, that is the exact time frame noted and the effects on pressure cells through the vertical column. For those who haven't seen our mega video, Energy from Space, it is linked right below this one and it details the real danger of our current situation, how it's getting worse by the year and how the changing solar system is going to be affecting the weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, our electrified civilization, and human health, considered a must-watch for all observers. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.